Hi witches! Oh my gosh, I am so excited for today's video topic. Um, so thank you guys for giving me the platform to be able to talk about this because I could probably talk about herbs and stuff for years. Oh my goodness. So today I wanted to go over kind of the top seven herbs that I use in my practice. I did pick seven because it's a lucky number. Um, and also because 10 is like a lot, but five is not enough. So I was just like seven. We're going to just go in the middle. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so um, today, just to give you a little bit of background about like who I am and maybe to explain why these herbs are a little bit more prevalent in my practice than maybe another practitioner's. Um, if you haven't met me before, or if this is the first video that you are watching on my channel, firstly, welcome. Secondly, hi, I'm B. I am a non-binary eclectic pagan and hedge witch from Pennsylvania. Hello. I've been practicing for like almost 12 years. It'll be technically 12 years in September. Um, and I just like love witchcraft. Um, hedge witchcraft is really focused on like herbalism, hearth magic, as well as kind of this concentration in spirit work. Um, my concentration happens to be in like plant spirits and animal spirits, less human spirits. They can keep that to themselves. No, I'm just kidding. And another big part of my practice is divination and dream work. Um, I've always had really vivid dreams and I, I mean, I'm not gonna like toot my own horn, but I think I'm pretty good at tarot um, considering what people have left me as feedback, so. Okay, now before we get into the correspondences, I did just want to say that this is the book that I use um, as a main like look reference, I guess, um, for magical herbs. So it's Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. I will say this is a really old book. Um, I think it goes back to like the 80s. And if that is dating me, I don't know. Um, sorry, but um, I... I like it. I think it's great for quick reference. I feel like it's incomplete. So I do recommend cross-referencing with any other um, like witchy books, um, any, uh, most books on like green magic or most like tr like witchcraft basics books have like some of those commonly used herbs in them listed with their correspondences as well. Um, so I would just cross-reference and really use the herb in the ways that um, appear twice. So like, for example, if an herb in here is like, oh, it's associated with love. And then in another book, it's also associated with love. It's probably safe to say that that herb is good for use in a love working or self-love working. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, cross-referencing is key in witchcraft. I would just be sure that you are doing your research. I know I feel like I parrot that a lot. And I know you guys are fantastic at it. So like, you know, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir, but I just wanted to say this is the main source that I'm using for correspondences that I am listing in this video. Okay, so grab a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and we'll just dive right in. Okay, these are technically in no particular order. I just happened to list my favorite one first and that is rosemary. Now I saw somewhere on the internet that people are saying that like rosemary can be used to um, like substitute any herb or um, can be used in place of any herb in a spell. Um, um, and it does have a lot of properties to it. So rosemary is very much associated with protection, love, um, mental acuity, exorcism, purification, memory, healing, sleep, and vitality or youth. So, you know, that's why I keep this glow. In reality, I've yet to hit 25, which is like when your body starts dying. So I'm enjoying this youthful glow until September. Oh, but seriously, I love using rosemary. It is my favorite herb literally of all time. Um, the scent, my mom used to grow rosemary plants outside our house when I was growing up. So I think that's why I kind of have this affinity to it. So it's definitely something, um, that I remember from my childhood that I use now in my practice, like very frequently. Um, but I use it the most in protection pouches, um, in memory spells. I used it a lot in like college. I had this like rosemary oil that I would put on my wrists before class, especially if I knew that we were going to be doing like a review session or anything like that, because rosemary is supposed to kind of help with you uh, retaining information. Um, it is also really good for retaining dreams. So if you're making maybe um, like a sweet dream spell, including some rosemary in it so you can like remember it because dream work is great. And it's, I've definitely had very like vivid dreams. And then when I wake up, I just feel them slipping away from me and I'm like, no. So again, I use rosemary the most to protect my space. I also use it as a smoke cleansing agent instead of white sage. Again, white sage um, is really sacred to um, indigenous people in America. Um, it's also endangered. So I just like don't use it or buy it. I use rosemary instead. You can find it fresh um, at grocery stores and then kind of tie it up yourself with a cotton twine in order to make a cleansing wand for yourself. Okay, next on my list, I have 
lavender. Um, and this is pretty much on par with rosemary with how much I use it in my practice and how much I love this herb. Um, lavender is associated with protection, sleep, chastity, uh, longevity, purification, happiness, and peace. In my own practice, I uh, associate this herb with the Morrigan because she was always there to like calm me down. Um, it's a color that features really prominently on her altar, the color of lavender. Um, and it's, it's one of my most used herbs, again, right along there with rosemary. Um, Lavender is really great for sleep spells, anti-anxiety sachets, so like using lavender in a cotton bag and placing that under your pillow. Smells amazing, gets you to drift off right to sleep. Um, I accidentally drank way too much lavender lemonade yesterday. Um, yesterday for me technically was like Letha uh, when I'm filming this. Um, and I made lavender lemonade and um, like drank like four glasses and took the like the hardest nap I've ever taken in my whole life. It was awesome. One of I think my most recent favorite uses of lavender um, when I went to go pick out my wedding dress, took my mom, my mother-in-law and my mom's mom. Um, and we went to go shopping and as a like commemorative act she gave us all uh, my grandmother gave us all little like lavender sachets with stuff embroidered on it to like commemorate the day and it has this like super cute like eyelet lace like very cottage core feel to it um it has like a little trim and stuff it is so cute and it just really made me like feel connected in that moment to like my mom my mother-in-law and um, my grandmother as well as like the mother energy I get from the Morrigan. So it was just like nice and it was not something that I was expecting. Um, so yeah, that's my history with lavender. <laughs> Next on my list is the herb mugwort. Um, so mugwort is associated with strength, psychic powers, protection, prophetic dreams, healing, and astral travel. And as a hedge witch, that is super important to my practice. Um, I don't really teach hedge walking or riding the hedge or astral traveling. Um, I don't really teach that on here. It's a very personal practice for me. Um, there might be a time in the future where I feel a little bit more comfortable with that. And I know people have asked me, um, it's just not something that I'm super comfortable sharing um, at this point in my life, but that does not mean that I won't have like a master class at some point, I'm sure. We talk about topics in witchcraft seemingly forever. Mugwort does kind of open you up to receiving messages from beyond. Um, I usually ingest it in a tea, but you should definitely check with your doctor, and this goes for any of the herbs that I list today. Check with your doctor before ingesting anything. It may affect some medication. Please, as like a common practice, always check before you ingest any sort of herb. I don't want anyone getting sick. So similarly to mugwort, the next herb that I really use a lot in my practice is mullen, and that is associated with courage, protection, health, love, divination, and exorcism. So before anyone freaks out, exorcism in the book of Scott Cunningham. Um, that just means like removing evil spirits from a place or removing negativity from a place. Again, it's kind of an older book and that word seems like very like, ah. Um, so I don't want anyone freaking out. I know it kind of like freaked me out when I first read this book, but I kind of just like have gotten used to it. Um, but anyways, I use mullen a lot in tandem with mugwort to help um, divine meaning in the visions or the things that I experience on the astral plane. So it's like one thing to like, I have learned. <laughs> it is one thing to travel there. It is another thing to like come back and retain the knowledge. Um, so mullen really helps me with that. I also use it, um, as part of a cleansing spray that I use for my house. Um, and also I read in here, which is not a practice that I use a whole lot, but mullen can be used to sub out uh, graveyard dust if that is part of your practice. It's not part of mine, but if it's part of yours, mullen is really great for that. Next we have basil, which is associated with love. Again, exorcism or getting rid of those negative energies or entities. Um, wealth, flying, and protection. Now I use basil the most in prosperity spells for whatever reason, like the leaves really remind me of like money or like coins or something um but it is super versatile for love divination and love magic especially within an already established relationship so i'm not going to get into the discourse as to whether or not you want to uh, practice love magic but if you are and maybe you want to kind of strengthen that love um between yourself and your partner basil is super good for that so i recommend it next we have kind of i think a classic um and that next on our list we have kind of a classic of the witchy world and that is cinnamon so that is associated with spirituality, healing, power, success, um, protection, lust, and love. Um, I use, and I think a lot of witches use cinnamon the most when you are wanting to add energy to a spell. So similarly to the way that like quartz, like clear quartz can add energy or amplify energy in a working, cinnamon similarly um, <laughs> helps with charging up a working as well. But don't take that to mean that you can use cinnamon in the way that you would use clear quartz in a spell. Um, 
in that it can kind of replace or take on the energy of anything around it. It has its own specific correspondences. Um, I also really love using cinnamon to draw in prosperity. Um, and I think overall, it's just a really great ingredient to add to any spell that you would like to make more powerful or in any spell that uh, you want to make a little bit more cozy or maybe to invite in comfort into your life. So I just, Cinnamon is just so great, oh my gosh. And our final one today is an herb I feel like is not talked about a lot, but is kind of like a cornerstone of my warding practice and my protective magic. And that is the herb Angelica. This again is associated with expelling negative energies or exorcism, um, protection, healing, and visions. Um, I use this primarily to ward my home. It is one of the most protective herbs I've personally come across. I, I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong because I don't necessarily work with the system of entities, but I believe it is associated with St. Michael. So if that is like a system of belief that you also have, it is just like a very, that should give you kind of like an idea of how protective this herb is, right? Um, so like St. Michael, the defender. On top of all of that amazing protective and warding capability, it also is um, an herb that I use to promote very vivid dreams as well. So I, I'll use it as kind of um, either a smoking blend or an incense that I inhale um, before going into a trance, so to speak. So again, if hedge witchcraft or hedge magic is kind of interesting to you, I definitely recommend checking that out. That is um, all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and chatting herbs. Let me know if um, this is something that's interesting to you or if you want me to talk about a specific type of herb or or if you want me to talk about herbs that relate to a specific correspondence or if there's stuff like that because I, I really like making these videos and I love talking about like green witchcraft. I'm getting more into herbalism throughout the entire year so like ah, I'm just so excited. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!